Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to use Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer is a graphic design app for high-level designers. This app won the Apple Design Award, which is an award from Apple, so it's an excellent app. Some people use this instead of Illustrator or Photoshop. This app includes some features that are available on both Photoshop and Illustrator. So if you want to create high quality art, this is the right app for you. The price of this app is $24, so it's pretty expensive, which is the reason why I wouldn't recommend this to beginners. But if you want to work on vector design or you want to master graphic design, I would definitely encourage you to get this app. What I'm going to work on today is the illustration of a shoe. I'm going to draw this using path. I will try to make this video as beginner friendly as possible, so I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. But before I start Affinity Designer, I have a rough draft of the shoe on Procreate. So let me show you that first. I made a square canvas and I drew a rough sketch using a 6P pencil. I'm going to save this in JPEG format and you can do that by tapping the tool icon at the upper left, selecting JPEG and keeping it in the photo folder. Next, we are going to move on to Affinity Designer. First, tap the plus button at the upper right corner to make a new canvas. We start off by creating an original document, but let me explain something first. Here at the top left, you can set the preset of the canvas for the web or for the device. For example, you can choose iPhone or iPad if you want the canvas to fit into the screen of those devices. Today we are going to make a custom square canvas and when you make custom sides, you can enter the dimensions you prefer. In this video, I will use a 1280 x 1280 square size. Now that I have my canvas, I will import a sketch I created on Procreate. Use flip view function to have the photo app open on one side and drag and drop the photo to the canvas. I will quickly adjust the size right here. Now I want to keep the rough sketch fixed to this position, so open the layer menu, select the sketch, and tap the settings options at the upper left. Then it will give you various options where you can lower the opacity to around 10%. Next, there is a lock button down here, so tap it and that should fix the position and prevent it from moving. When it's finished, we are ready to draw the shoe using path. Affinity Designer has two modes called vector mode and pixel mode. Vector mode is similar to Illustrator and it includes tools such as path or Vizier curve. Pixel mode is for when you want to do some photo editing or draw illustration using brush tools. So when you're looking for features you can find on Photoshop, use pixel mode to draw. It's important for you to understand these two modes and use them depending on what you want to do. Today I'm going to use path tool to trace the sketch and draw illustration like Illustrator, so I'll be using vector mode. When you're using vector mode, look at the top left corner of the screen where there is a blue icon and that's the sign that you're on vector mode. The icon next to that is the icon for pixel mode, but for now make sure that the icon on the left is blue and let's add a new layer. Tap the plus button and choose the vector layer. If you added the vector layer, it's time to start drawing on it using path tool.
Now on to how to draw using path. I usually use a vector brush tool on the left and start from here. After choosing the brush, the settings will appear down here, so you can adjust things like thickness or the opacity of the brush. You can adjust it by sliding it like this. The one that says controller is for adjusting pen pressure. This time we want to keep the thickness constant, so I'm going to set the controller disable. After selecting the thickness of the brush, I'm going to trace the sketch. First, I'm going to try tracing it. When that's done, you can use the selection tool to select the line, and when you do that, you'll see that there are some dots on your line. These dots are called anchor points, and this indicates that we have a path. This means everything I draw will be transformed into path, so we can edit it as a Vizier curve. So let's keep tracing lines using the vector brush tool. Here's a tip when you're drawing, don't be too careful and don't slow down too much when tracing. It's actually much easier if you do it quickly. The reason is if you trace the lines slowly, the program generates too many anchor points on the lines and for path, it's better to have less of them, which I'll explain later. But for now, note that it's better to move the pen faster. So don't hesitate and keep drawing. Let's move on to drawing a circle. When you want to create a circle, check the toolbar on the left and select the third button from the bottom. Then select the circle tool, which is the second tool from the top. To draw a perfect circle, keep your finger anywhere on the screen and slide your pen like this. Let's change the color. Tap the circle icon in the toolbar on the right and leave the color button here off. I want to make the outline black, so I'll adjust the settings here. You can change the thickness as well. When you want to duplicate a circle, select it, then hold two fingers on the screen and slide a pen. Let me show you once more. Keep two fingers on the screen and slide them. You can duplicate objects like this, so I'll use this to draw these dots here on the shoe. I'm pretty much done with the baseline of the illustration, so from here, I'm going to straighten out these wobbly lines. I want to make them look a bit smoother, so I'll work on that. To do this, I'm going to use the anchor points that were just made. To adjust the anchor points, use the node tool, the second one from the top in the toolbar on the left. 
When you select path using the node tool, these dots show up so you can use them to adjust the path. When you move the anchor points like this, you can change the path freely. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to delete some of the anchor points as it's easier to draw a smooth line with less of them. As you can see, there are about 10 anchor points on the line, but the best would be around 3 to 4. So I'll select the ones that I don't want and tap delete on the panel below to erase them. When you erase the anchor points, adjust the path to make it smooth and delete another one again to repeat the process until you're done. Fewer dots mean smoother lines, but it also makes it harder to make the lines. So if you're used to using Illustrator, this might be easy, but this could be a challenge for beginners. The only way to get better at this is to get used to the process, so I hope you practice and get used to drawing busier curves. By the way, there is a way to get better at using the path tool on Affinity Designer, and that is to use your right hand to hold the pen and edit the path, and use your left hand to adjust the settings and use the toolbar. This is much quicker, so remember to use both hands. Okay, I'm done with adjusting the path. There's a lot of paths in the layer panel over here. The lines you make using path won't change when you expand or shrink them. The texture says smooth. In some other apps, when you change the size of the picture, the lines start to get rough, but that doesn't happen in Affinity Designer. And I think that's a really good thing about this app. To finish it up, I'm going to add some color. When doing this, I usually add a pixel layer first. I'm going to switch from vector mode to pixel mode using the panel in the upper left corner, and then select the brush tool. And we are ready to draw.
Okay, I'm finished. That was pretty long, but I wanted to explain step by step, so that was everything. Let's take a look at how the layer looks now. There is a vector layer at the top, and below that there is a pixel layer with the color, and at the bottom we have the background layer. I think the path for the tip of this shoe could be improved a little bit. But this video's focus was on how to use these functions, so I'm going to say we're done for now. I hope you have better understandings of Affinity Designer now. Some of you might have it downloaded already, but never actually use it, so I hope this gives you an opportunity for you to give it a try. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for watching my video. Bye bye!